Hello, this is Petro and you are watching WellCode and this is another video in the Career Path series. In this video I'm gonna tell you what are the various options you can choose if you want to become a software engineer or if you want to have a programming related job. Before starting out, I believe that even if you won't work in the technology field, you can benefit a lot from knowing how to write code and from having that kind of logical thinking. Let's say, for example, that you want to know how many years you need in order to buy a new home or a new car. And you can do it the old school way by just using some paper and writing down, down all the calculations, the income, put everything in here. And even if you use a calculator for doing the calculations, uh, without automating it, it will still be very hard and painful and you won't like it. So let's throw this away and focus on how you can automate it. The easiest way to do it is just by using a spreadsheet and you can put there as an input how much money you are earning each month. If you know that every year your income will raise by 10%, you can put that also in the spreadsheet. You can subtract the amount of money you're spending each month and you can sum everything up. Uh, I mean the money you are saving. So you can know how much time you need in order to save a certain amount of money. As you may know, there are a lot of coding related videos on YouTube, but most of them assume that you already know how to code or they don't assume, but they present things as if you are already in the domain. So let's solve this problem. You probably don't know how to write code and you don't know how to instruct the computer to do things. And this is a really different thing compared to everything you've been used to. And you're probably wondering, what's a programmer doing in front of a computer all day? How are they creating the applications? And I want to clarify that for you because when I was in high school, I, I knew I want to do uh, computer science. I solved problems, but the things I was building were just things which outputted numbers on a black screen so it wasn't that interesting and I don't think there was anyone who wanted to buy that or to pay me for doing that and I was always wondering what what's their job like what are they doing actually an easy comparison is that you have a lot of people who are building a car like they want to build a nice fast car someone needs to just build the wheels and some other person needs or maybe more persons need, need to work on the engine and every person in that team has a specific task and he builds a part of the car and that's the same thing for application let's take for example the youtube app there are a lot of things which need to work in that app first of all you have the search functionality second you have the video and the video is split into image and sound and maybe you are watching this video using subtitles and that is what software engineers are doing they are building small parts of an app and in order to do that they instruct the computer how to how to build the app how to print the output how to show it on the screen and for doing that they use instructions and each instruction is telling the computer to do a really small part and basically that's programming and the first option that you got is to just become a software engineer a person who just builds an application you don't need to worry about all those things because currently there are a lot of libraries and frameworks which help you build applications faster so you don't need to worry how to build a button which looks nicely because you can just use a button already implemented in a library. But that's the basic idea of a software engineering job. You just have a large application and you need to add features on top of it. That's the first option. The second one is to improve the code or to fix the problems. This is the second one actually. To fix bugs, to fix problems, you need to look into the code which was already written and to improve it or to fix the problems in it. And the third one is to write cleaner code, to do the refactoring. That's the, that's the term software engineers use for that because most of the complex applications are, are big. They have 
tens of thousands of lines of code or even hundreds of thousands. I think there are applications which have uh, millions of lines of code. I think Google has tens of millions of lines of code among all the, all the applications. So because of the large scale, uh, the code needs to be very easy to read. And sometimes people work on deadlines and they don't write the code as clean as they are supposed to write it. And here comes the software engineer who has a refactoring task. He looks over the code. If it's not easily readable, he, star he starts to understand it. And then he rewrites it in the more clear way, in a form which is easier to read and in a form which allows other developers to build on top of it. So this is the first case you work as a software engineer for a big company which works on big projects. The second option as a software engineer is working for a smaller company or for a startup or build smaller projects. And in this part, you will need to build, uh, to build more features. You will have more responsibility. You are not just building a button which has some functionality or just a search box. You're building the entire app you're, or you're building large parts of that app. And if you want to build that, you will need to join a smaller company or a small project in a bigger company and the last option is for you to become a freelancer this is a very popular option nowadays basically as a freelancer you don't have a boss you have a client and you need to build an application for him or to build a smaller functionality but usually freelancers build an entire application they don't tell you oh you need to come from at nine o'clock or at ten o'clock you need to be in the office you need to have meetings and then you can leave at five or six if you want you can work in the midnight or you can work from whatever country you want to travel to you just need to deliver the product maybe you have regular meetings to show the clients that you are making progress but you have more freedom even if you have a lot of freedom and this is the big advantage of that you may be in trouble if you are not able to find projects because computer science is a field which grows a lot i don't know many freelancers who don't have enough projects most of them they can't take more projects so they need to pass them to other people but if you are not a good developer if you are lazy or if you are not doing your job you won't be able to have projects compared to a large company where you may get away with that however usually people figure that out on their own this was the first option you got if you want to write code for a living. This thing is characterized by being able to show your friends what you're building if you're not under an NDA. <laughs> But usually you can show your friends what are, you are building. You are always seeing the end result. You can test it. You can look at it on the screen and you need to keep up with all the new technologies. If you want to be a good software engineer, things are changing faster and you're not using your brain as much as in the second options, which we're going to switch to. The second option is to do uh, more research oriented stuff. Let's take, for example, facial recognition at some point humans decided oh we have the cameras and now we want to know which pictures contain humans and this was a hard problem but they needed to solve it and for solving that they didn't spend that much time in front of a computer at first they firstly needed to think about the algorithm they needed to think about which method to use in order to uh, find humans in pictures and before that there were even more challenging problems imagine the internet you have those optical fiber cables which run under the ocean and they send some kind of optical signal but how can that optical signal be converted from zeros and ones to actual images this is another hard problem what happens if the cable moves and there's some kind of distortion so the light doesn't get transmitted uh, in a correct way how can you recover the data and if we want to go further backwards, we can think about the computers. I still believe that computers are a miracle. I don't understand fully how they work, but there were some researchers who discovered the computer, who discovered how they can store information inside this thing. And afterwards, after they discovered how to store information, they they discovered this cool thing called display or screen and they discovered how to output images on it and it's phenomenal. But in order to be able to do this kind of stuff, some people close themselves into a lab around here, around Silicon Valley 
and they started thinking about how to solve these problems. And this is and this is still uh, still the case today. If there is a lot of research going on in machine learning and in other fields, they are trying to build quantum computers. And if you want to do that, uh, the path is very different compared to a software engineer because you need to study a lot. Usually, if you want to end up in a cool research team, you need to go to a prestigious university. Usually, it's good to go to an Ivy League one or to Cambridge or Oxford. It depends a lot on the domain you're choosing. So if you want to do machine learning, you need to go to a university which has really good researchers for machine learning. Probably you will need a PhD. And after the PhD, so after like 10 years of studying, you can go and work as a researcher. However, there are some students who are able to earn money while doing their PhD, but usually it's, it takes a lot more time until you are able to make money. And the job is really different because you spend more time thinking about the problems, about how to solve them. You spend more time reading stuff, trying to understand how things work, reading research papers. The amount of time you spend just writing code and just and creating things is a lot shorter. Another important thing about research is that it's harder to switch uh, domains. If you are a machine learning researcher and if you want to go into computer networks and do some sort of things which is not related to machine learning, it will be almost like starting from scratch. So it's really hard to, to switch domains compared to if you are a software engineer and you were focused on building web, ap web applications and you want to switch to game development or to mobile development, it's, it's a lot harder than if you are a software engineer. And I think it's also harder to switch the companies. If you work in doing research for, for a large company uh, and it's really specific uh, to what their needs are, it will be harder to go on to another company because usually companies do different things. But to sum everything up, uh, there's not a clear line between those two jobs. Uh, it's more like an axis, so you can still be a software engineer which implements facial recognition algorithms, who still needs to do some research papers, or you can be a researcher who still needs to implement his ideas to test them, and you will still need to keep up to some extent to the new technologies which are in, in the field. And now let's answer some questions which I get all the time. First of all, what's better, web development or mobile development, or on which field of software engineering I need to go to? There's no such thing as the best answer for that. So if you want to build a mobile application, you can just go and do that. If you want to build web applications, which are really popular these days, you can also do that. The switch is really easy between various kinds of software engineering. If you're not going too specific, uh, usually you can switch in maybe two weeks, you can read and understand the basic principles. And after you start writing some code, you will get uh, the basic idea really fast. Usually people tend to go to a domain where they have some prior experience. So for example, if John was doing a mobile development course at his university and he built a good app for that course, he will tend to choose a mobile development job or when he applies to internships, they will tend to put him in mobile development teams. But it's not no such thing as the best domain and it's really easy to switch between them. And now another question, which is the best programming language? And I'll answer this question in the next video. I, I'm going to talk only about programming languages and which language you need to learn. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel in order to uh, find out more about programming languages. And the last question is, how much time do I need to get a job? And for software engineering, you can be really fast. So if you are hardworking, you can uh, start writing code for a company after six months. If you are hardworking and if you are really focused on what you're learning, uh, most of the people need one or two years until they learn things because they have some other job and they, they learn in, in their free time. But usually you can, you can go into industry after one year. And this brings us to a related question, which is, should I go to college or which college should I choose? Probably we'll do a video about it later. But the short answer is that if you want to just be a regular software engineer, you don't need to go to a college. However, and this is a big however, a college helps you a lot because you are surrounded by, by all these people who are also trying to learn how to write code. 
and that will motivate you a lot and it will help you be in more discipline so if you are lazy it's better to go to a college you need to take care so don't go into a big debt in order to have a college there are a lot of cheap options but if you want to go into research or academia the best way to do that or the most successful way is to go to a university which are with a lot of prestige thanks a lot for watching this video till the end don't forget to hit the like button if you learned something useful from this video and don't forget to subscribe in order to be up to date to every video we're gonna release on this channel and if you have friends who also want to learn how to write code don't forget to share this video with them and this way you are also helping us release better content and until next time i wish you all the best and i hope you'll have a very productive week and you'll learn a lot of new things <laughs>